In this video, I'm going to show you how to collect, organize, monitor, and analyze industrial data using AWS IoT SiteWise. And for demonstration, I've got my demo plant here with real sensors collecting data from physical assets. I'll be exposing all of this sensor information through an OPC UA server and then using AWS IoT SiteWise to transfer the data to AWS Cloud for monitoring. This video is sponsored by HiveMQ, providers of an enterprise-grade edge and cloud-based MQTT broker and Opto22, manufacturers of reliable industrial controllers for automation and IIoT applications. So please do check them out to help support this channel. My name is Kutzai Mandi Teresa with Industry 4 Auto TV and I regularly publish Industrial Internet of Things tutorials on this channel. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to make sure that you never miss any of the videos. So what is AWS IoT SiteWise? In a nutshell, AWS IoT SiteWise is a managed service that allows you to collect data directly from production equipment such as machines, sensors, PLCs, SCADA, and historians using protocols that are common to manufacturing plants like OPC UA, Modbus TCP, and Ethernet IP, and then transfer that data to AWS Cloud for further analysis. To achieve that, AWS utilizes its edge computing runtime called AWS IoT Greengrass to host a gateway software called AWS IoT SiteWise Connector, which can be configured to read data from industrial data sources. In addition, AWS IoT SiteWise has a cloud component with an asset modeling framework that allows you to create virtual representations of your plant flow assets, such that the collected data can be streamed live from the gateway, stored, and mapped to virtual assets. In addition to reading data using industrial automation protocols, AWS IoT SiteWise also supports ingestion using MQTT and the SiteWise API. Further, AWS IoT SiteWise has a web-based visualization and analytics platform that allows you to create and share operational dashboards with plant operators for real-time monitoring and visualization of metrics like overall equipment effectiveness. Now, the obvious advantage of using such a managed service is that it automatically scales to accommodate huge volumes of industrial data which can typically reach terabytes within hours in some plants. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at my demo scenario. Okay, so this is my demo plant here. So I've got here my jars acting as my tanks, tank 1 and tank 2. Now on each tank, I've got two sensor units. Sensor unit 1 is an ultrasonic range finder for measuring the level of the liquid inside the tank. And sensor 2 is a DHT11 sensor for measuring the temperature and humidity. And then here I've got my Raspberry Pi acting as the field device that is collecting all the sensor information and exposing it as variables using an OPC UA server. And then this other Raspberry Pi is acting as my gateway device. It is responsible for hosting the AWS Greengrass software and AWS IoT SiteWise connector software to connect to the OPC UA server running on my field device Raspberry Pi, collect the data and transmit that data to the AWS cloud for analytics. Now, this is what the overall solution architecture of my demo looks like. Okay, so let's go ahead and access my field device Raspberry Pi's Node-RED interface to see how I've implemented my OPC UA server. Okay, so let's just briefly go through my OPC UA server implementation here. So first here, I'm reading data from my ultrasonic range finder, calculating the liquid level as a percentage, and then setting the result as a global variable. And then I'm doing the same for tank 2. And then next here, I'm reading the temperature and humidity from my DHT11 sensor, and then also setting these as global variables. And then again, I'm doing the same thing for the DHT11 sensor on my tank 2. Okay, and then here, 
I'm reading those global variables for ingestion into my OPC UA server node. So this here is my OPC UA server node. Now, if I open up the OPC UA server node, first you can see that I'm setting this OPC UA server port to 54845. And then if you go under the discovery tab here, you can see here I'm specifying my OPC UA server endpoint URL, whereby this is the IP address of my Pi, and this is the port number of the server. Okay, and then let's look at the actual OPC UA server variables. So for that, I'll go to the address space tab here. So here I'm getting sensor readings that were set as global variables. And then under the root folder, I'm creating two folders, tank1 and tank2. And then inside of those, I'm creating tank1 unit 1, tank1 unit 2, tank2 unit 1 and tank2 unit 2 folders. And then here I put those sensor readings inside the appropriate folder. Okay, so let's go ahead and use an OPC UA client to read this OPC UA server information to confirm that our server is indeed running and that we are successfully exposing our demo plant data. And for that, I'm going to pull up my process OPC UA client application. So here you can see we are connected to my OPC UA server endpoint URL. And then if I expand our objects here, You can see our folder structure with all our variables inside. So you can see here our tank level for our tank 1 unit 1 sensor is currently at 61% and our tank 2 humidity is at 92%. Now if I pour some liquid into our tank 2, we should see the value rise from 15.3 okay so you can see that our value has risen from 15.3 okay so we've got our demo plant running and our opc ua server successfully collecting and exposing our demo plant variables now the next step is for us to create a virtual representation of our demo plant assets in the cloud using AWS IoT SiteWise so that we can start collecting data from our physical demo plant assets via OPC UA and map it to our virtualized demo plant assets. Okay, so to start visualizing our demo plant assets, we need to log into AWS Management Console, which I've already done. So from here, I'll click on services here at the top. And then proceed by clicking on IoT SiteWise under Internet of Things. And when I do that, I'm taken to the AWS IoT SiteWise console. Now, before creating our demo plant assets, let's first understand the concept behind asset modeling and creation. So, every device or piece of equipment that generates and sends data to AWS Cloud is represented as an asset. In our case, Tank 1 is an asset, and so is Tank 2. Further, assets can have child assets, which are assets that fall under a given asset. For example, each of our tanks has Unit 1 and Unit 2 as child assets. Also, an asset can be created from a logical grouping of other assets. For example, when we group our assets here, we form a demo plant asset, essentially creating an asset hierarchy. Now, here's the thing, every asset needs to be created from an asset model. An asset model being a guiding structure that is used to define the format of an asset. For example, we know that our unit 2 assets on tank 1 and tank 2 share a common set of properties, which are temperature and humidity. So what that means is that we can define a unit 2 asset model from which the unit 2 asset from tank 1 and unit 2 asset from tank 2 can be derived from. This is meant to enforce consistency across assets of the same type. So this implies that only after you define your asset models can you then go on to create your industrial assets. Now because our unit 1 and unit 2 assets are the same on both tanks, we need to create 4 asset models for our demo plant asset hierarchy. 
one for unit one, one for unit two, one for a tank, and another one for our demo plant. Okay, so let's go ahead and start creating our asset models. So to do that, you scroll down here and select create new model. And when the page opens up, I'll start by creating an asset model for unit one. So I'll call it unit one model. And then under description, I'll put unit one model template. Now your attributes are values that don't change much like your serial number. In our case, we'll put one attribute whose name is unit type and whose default value is SRF05 ultrasonic range finder and with a data type of string. And then under measurements here, our model has one measurement whose name is tank level with percent as the unit of measurement and a data type of double. And then we don't have transformations. Transformations are where you can define calculated values. And then on metric definitions, this is where you put things like average temperature over a certain period of time. Okay, when that is done, we can go ahead and click on create model. Next, I'll create our model for unit two. To do that, I'll click on create model here. So I'll call this unit two model with a description of unit two model template. And then under attributes here, we'll put unit type and the default value is DHT11 sensor. And the data type is string. Now for our unit two model, we have two measurements. The first one is temperature with Celsius as the unit of measurement and a data type of double. Okay, when that is done, we can go ahead and click on create model. Next, I'll create a model for our tank. So I'll call this tank model with a description of tank model template. And then under attributes here, we put tank type and we'll call this a cooling tower with a data type of string. And then for our tank model, we don't have any measurements. Now under hierarchies here is where we define our asset model hierarchy. So I'll add asset models that fall under our tank model. In other words, child asset models. We'll call the first one unit one model and then select the corresponding hierarchy model, which is, as you can see, the model that we created earlier. And then I'll add another child asset model, which I'll call unit two model. And again, select the corresponding asset model. Okay, when that is done, we can go ahead and click on create model. And then finally, I'll create a model for our demo plant. I'll call this demo plant model. Give it a description. And then under attributes here, we can put demo plant type. And then here we can just say cooling towers plant and leave the data type as string. And then again, for our demo plant model, we don't have any measurements. Now here under hierarchies, I'll need to add asset models that fall under our demo plant model, which is the tank model. And then I'll select this corresponding asset model here. And then I'll go ahead and click on create model. Okay, so we've successfully created our four asset models. Now that we've finished creating our models, the next step is to then go ahead and create actual assets based on these models. Now, to create an asset against a model, you click into the asset model. So we'll start with unit one model. When the page is opened, you scroll down and click on create asset. So as you can see here, the model is already selected for us. So here we enter the name of our asset, which I'll call 
tank one unit one and then choose to create asset okay i'll go ahead and create another unit one asset for our tank two using the same unit one model so i'll click on create asset and then here under model i'll select unit one model and then i'll call this asset tank two unit one and then choose to create asset okay next i'll go ahead and create our tank one unit two asset under model here i'll select unit two model and then i'll call this asset tank one unit two next i'll create my tank two unit two asset using the unit two model i'll call it tank two unit two Okay, next I'll create my tank 1 and tank 2 assets using the tank model. I'll begin with tank 1. So here under model, I'll select tank model. So I'll call this asset tank 1. Click on create asset. Followed by my tank 2 asset. Using the tank model. Okay, and then finally, I'll create my demo plant asset using the demo plant model. So I'll click on create asset. And then under model here, I'll select demo plant model. And then I'll call this demo plant one. And then click on create asset. Okay, so we've successfully created our assets. Now the next step is to map the hierarchy model to our virtual assets, which means that under each asset, we need to add all the assets that are associated with it. So we're going to begin with our tank one asset. I'll go ahead and open tank one asset. And then here I'll click on edit. And then select to add associated asset. So for my first associated asset, I'll select the unit one model and then select tank one unit one. Add another associated asset and this time select unit two model and then add tank one unit two as an associated asset. And then when I'm done, click on save. Okay, now I need to do the same for tank two so I'll click on my tank two asset and then again, click on edit, click on add associated asset. And then under hierarchy here, I'll select unit one model and then select tank two unit one as an associated asset. Click to add another associated asset and then under hierarchy here, select unit two model and then select tank two unit two as an associated asset and then i'll click on save now the next thing that i need to do is to add my two tanks under my demo plant asset so i'll select demo plant click on edit select to add associated asset and then under hierarchy here i'll select tank model and then choose tank one as an associated asset add another associated asset Select tank model again under hierarchy and then choose tank 2 as an associated asset and then I'll click on save. Okay, so we've finished creating our asset hierarchy. Now, if I go back here to models, you'll see that we have four models and then when I go to assets, You'll see that we've got seven assets and you'll notice that we've successfully created a hierarchical relationship among our assets. 
Now, the next thing that we want to do is to configure our virtual assets to accept data streams from our OPC UA server on the plant floor in order to update their measurements. For example, I'll select tank 1 unit 2 and then click on edit. And if I scroll down, so here you'll notice that we only have temperature as a measurement, so we need to add humidity. So in order to add humidity to our asset, all we need to do is to go back to our model. Which is the unit 2 model. Click on edit. And then select to add new measurement. We'll call this one humidity. And the unit is percent. And it is of type double. So I'll scroll down and then I'll click on save. And then here under measurements, you can see we now have humidity and temperature. So if I go back to my asset, which is tank 1 unit 2, you'll see here that we now have temperature and humidity appearing. Also, if we go back to our asset, Select tank 2, unit 2. You also see that humidity is also appearing there. So this measurement section here under each asset is where I need to specify the OPC UA node IDs in order to collect the tag variables for each corresponding measurement. But before we do that, we need to set up our Raspberry Pi that is acting as the gateway in order for it to collect the data from our OPC UA server. So we're going to begin by installing our AWS IoT Greengrass Core software and then we'll deploy the AWS IoT Sitewise connector on it and then configure it to collect the data. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got my Raspberry Pi with the freshly installed Raspberry Pi OS. So I'll SSH into it using party. Now, since I'm installing Greengrass Core for the first time, I need to set up my device first to prepare it for the Greengrass Core installation. I'll begin by creating a system user account called Greengrass Core User. And then I'll create a system group account called Greengrass Group. And then next, to improve your device security, AWS recommends that you harden your device with symbolic link protection and to do that we'll need to navigate to our Raspberry Pi system control directory using this command. And then when we list the files in this directory, you'll notice here that we have a file called 98-arapi.conf. So let's go ahead and open it using this command. And then when it is open, we add these two configuration settings. And then we save this file using Control X. And then after that, we reboot our Pi. Now there is another setup that we need to do before we start installing the software. So we want to enable our Greengrass software to be able to control memory so that it can set memory limits for some of its functions and also for it to run in its default containerization mode. So to enable that, we go to the boot directory. And then once we are inside our boot directory, we open a file called command line.txt. Now inside this text file, we append the following to the end of the line. We first append this setting C group enable equals to memory followed by this setting which is C group memory equals to 1 and then save the file using control X and then when that is done 
we reboot the Pi once again. Okay, so our Raspberry Pi is now ready for AWS IoT Greengrass installation. To begin, I'll need to log in to my AWS Management Console, which I've already done. Few things that I need to mention here before we proceed. First of all, here I'm using an AWS free tier account, and with it you can create up to three Greengrass Core devices. Second, AWS Greengrass Core software has two versions version 1 and the recently released version 2. Now, AWS IoT SiteWise is not yet compatible with version 2. So I'll be installing version 1 on our Raspberry Pi. Lastly, you need to make sure that your IoT SiteWise and IoT Greengrass instances are deployed in the same AWS regions. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our Greengrass installation. And to do that, I'll click on services here at the top And then I'll proceed by selecting IoT Greengrass here under Internet of Things. Now, as soon as I do that, it takes me to the Getting Started page under Greengrass. And this here is the version 2 UI. So I'll need to go to my classic interface here. Now, we start by creating our Greengrass group. So here I'll navigate to Groups. Click on Create Group, click on Grant Permission, select to use the recommended default group creation, and then I would have to give my Greengrass group a name, I'll call this Sitewise Greengrass, click on Next. Now as soon as you create a group, it will ask you to create a core device because each group needs to have at least one core device. So in this case, the core device is going to be the Raspberry Pi that we're configuring. And then I'll go ahead and click on Next. And then here I'll click on Create Group and Core. Okay, when the creation is complete, you now need to go ahead and download the security resources, which include the certificate and keys that have been generated for our device to connect to the cloud. Now, you only get one chance to download these, so make sure you do so before you navigate away from this page. So I'll go ahead and download these. Now, once you've got your certificates, you can then go ahead and click on choose your platform here. So this is where we're going to download the actual Greengrass software package for our platform. Now, because my Raspberry Pi has an ARM v7 processor, I'll select to download an ARM v7 package for Raspbian. Okay, so now I've downloaded two items, my certificates and my Greengrass core software package. The next thing that I want to do is to move these from my PC into my Raspberry Pi. And for that, I'm going to use a utility called WinSCP. So I will pull it up here, and then I'll drag these two items into the home slash Pi directory of my Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now if we go back to our AWS console, You'll notice here that there is also an option to download a root CA. We're going to skip this for now. We'll download it from the Raspberry Pi terminal as I will show you in a minute. Okay, now I'll go ahead and access my Raspberry Pi terminal. Now here I'm in the home Pi directory. And if I list the files in this directory, you can see the two items that I've just moved into this directory. So I'll first extract my Greengrass software package and put it into the root directory using this command. Okay, so this operation would have created a new Greengrass directory in the root directory. Next, I'll extract my certificates 
into this newly created green grass directory using this command. Now this creates a sets directory. So let us cd into the sets directory by going into the green grass directory first and then going into the sets directory. And if I list the files in this directory, you can see we have our certificate and private and public keys. Now this is where we need to download the root CA that we skipped on our console. So we do that using this command. And then we can check to confirm that our root CA file is not empty. Okay, now we can finally start our Greengrass software. And to do that, we need to first go into the Greengrass code directory and then running the software using this command. Okay, so as you can see, Greengrass was successfully started with PID 1068. And then we can go back to our AWS console And then here we can click on finish. Okay, now that we have got our AWS IoT Greengrass Core software installed on our gateway Raspberry Pi, the next thing that we need to do is to configure our gateway device for AWS IoT sitewise. So I'll open up my Raspberry Pi terminal. Now, AWS IoT sitewise gateway software requires Java version 8 to be installed. So we'll begin by installing Java version 8. To do that, I'll first run the update command. And then I'll run the installation of Java 8 using this command. Okay, when that is complete, I'll check the version of Java running. Now, AWS IoT Greengrass Core software assumes a Java 8 directory. So in order to allow it to use Java, we need to create a symbolic link to the Java executable. And to do that, we run the following command. Next, we create a sitewise data directory using this command. All the AWS IoT sitewise data will be stored in this directory. And then next, we give the Greengrass core user that we created earlier permissions for that directory using these commands. Okay, the setup is complete. Now let's go ahead and run our Greengrass software. So I'll cd into the Greengrass core directory and then start Greengrass. Notice here that I have to run Greengrass each time I reboot my Pi, but in a production environment, you might want to configure your Greengrass core software to start automatically when the device reboots, which can be achieved with a few commands. Okay, now to allow this Raspberry Pi to access AWS IoT sitewise in the cloud on our behalf, we must create an AWS identity and access management policy and role. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go to my AWS management console, go to services here, and then proceed by selecting IAM under security, identity, and compliance here. And then next we select policies here in the navigation pane, and then choose to create a policy. And then here we're going to open up the JSON tab and we're going to replace these contents with this policy. And then here you click on next, select next again to go to review. So here we're going to enter the name of our policy. We'll call this sitewise demo and then give it a description. And then from here, we choose to create policy. 
and then next we go to our navigation pane here and select roles choose to create a role under select type of trusted entity we choose AWS service and then when we scroll down here we will select Greengrass as the service that will use this role and then we choose next to go to permissions and then here we search for the policy that we created select the checkbox against it and then choose next to go to tags and then we click on next again to go to review so here we enter the name of the role we'll call it sitewise demo and then we leave the description as default and then here we choose create role and then next we click into our new role and then choose the trust relationships tab and then choose to edit trust relationship and then we replace the contents with this role okay and then when that is done we choose to update trust policy okay so now that we have successfully created our im role the next step is to attach our im role to our greengrass group okay so to do that we need to go to our aws iot greengrass console and then once we're here we go to groups And then we choose our sitewise greengrass group that we created earlier and then in the navigation pane here we choose settings and then here in the group role section we choose to add role and then here we choose the role that we created in creating our im policy and role which is sitewise demo and then we save and then while we're here we need to enable stream manager so stream manager is what allows our code device to transfer streams of data from the gateway to the aws cloud so to enable stream manager we go to the stream manager section here we choose edit and then we make sure that our stream manager is enabled okay that is done now the next thing that we need to do is to configure our aws iot sitewise connector which is the actual module that will be deployed on our gateway device to collect data from our opc ua server okay so we begin by going to groups select our sitewise greengrass group and then under our group we choose connectors and then choose to add a connector and then here from this list we choose iot sitewise and then click on next okay so my opc ua server does not require authentication so i don't need to configure any secrets here now if you remember when setting up our raspberry pi for sitewise we created a sitewise data directory with a path of var slash sitewise now if you used a different path for your sitewise data storage this is where you put that path now next if our raspberry pi loses connection to the internet the sitewise connector will catch the data until the connection is restored so here you can put the maximum size of the buffer before it starts overriding from the oldest data so to use default settings here we'll leave both fields empty and then we choose add and then we can go ahead and deploy everything that we've been doing onto our device so to do that we click on actions here and then select deploy choose automatic detection to start the deployment And then if we go to the deployments here you can see that our deployment is in progress 
Okay, so the deployment of our AWS IoT Sitewise connector has been successful. Now the next step is to add our gateway to AWS IoT Sitewise. And after that, deploy my OPC UA server configurations to my gateway. So I'll go to my AWS IoT Sitewise console. Okay, once I'm in my AWS IoT Sitewise console, I'll select gateways here, and then I'll choose create gateway, and then here I'll give my gateway a name, I'll call it headquarters demo plant, and then for the green grass group ID, I'll select the green grass group that we created earlier. And then I'll go ahead and click on create gateway. Okay, now we can go ahead and add a data source to my gateway. And to do that, I'll click on manage here. And then click on view details. And then under sources here, I'll select add source. And then here, under protocol options, I'll leave OPC UA selected. And then I'll call this data source demo plant one OPC UA server. And then here, I'll put my OPC UA server endpoint URL address. And then I'll leave my message security mode set as none and authentication configuration set to none. And then here is where we need to configure the OPC UA nodes that we're going to be collecting. Now, by default, my gateway would upload nodes from all OPC UA paths except those with server information. So here we can actually define node filters to limit the data streams that my gateway sends to AWS Cloud. So in my case, I only want nodes from my Tank 1 and Tank 2 folders. Okay, now I can go ahead and click on Add Source. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is to map the actual OPC UA variable tags to the measurements section of my virtual assets. So I'll go to my assets. And then here I'll start with tank one, unit one. Click on edit. And then scroll down to measurements. Now here we need to put the property alias, which is the actual path to OPC UA variable tags. So for my tank one, unit one, tank level variable tag, the alias is slash tank one slash tank one unit one slash tank level and then i'll click on save and then i'll go ahead and do the same for all measurements of our assets Okay, so we've finished mapping our variable text to our virtual asset measurements. Now make sure that your alias under measurements here is written the same way as in your OPC UA server. I had actually left out a space here and was confused why I was not getting the data from my server. Okay, so I'll go back to tank 2 unit 2. Now, if we go under measurements here, you can see that we are getting our values from our OPC UA server under latest value here. And if I check on the other assets, you 
you can see we're getting our tank level for unit one tank one we're also getting our temperature and humidity and we're also getting our tank level for tank one Okay, now that we've got our OPC UA server data on SiteWise, we want to go ahead and visualize this data. And for that, we're going to use a managed service called SiteWise Monitor. Now to access our SiteWise Monitor, we go back to our SiteWise console homepage. And then once we're here, we scroll down and click on Create Portal. Okay, so if you are doing this for the first time, you'll be asked to sign in or create a new user with IAM or AWS SSO credentials. So here I'll give my portal a name. And then here I have to put a contact email for support. I'll go ahead and click on next. So I'll just disable alarms for now. And then I'll go ahead and click on create. So I'll just go ahead and check my profile and then click on next. And then I'll select my profile again and then click on assign users. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and click on the portal link that has been generated for me. Okay, so now I'm logged into my AWS SiteWise Monitor portal. Now, if I click on assets here on the navigation menu, You can see all our assets that we created and mapped to our OPC UA server. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new project. So I'll click on add asset to project. And then here I'll click on next. I'll give my project a name. And then I'll click on add asset to project. Okay, so I've successfully created my project. Now inside this project, I can go ahead and start creating dashboards. So I'll click on create dashboard. And then I'll give my dashboard a name. I'll call it demo plant one. Now, if I click on an asset here, you can see its properties show up here with current values and then you can add these properties to your dashboard by simply dragging them and dropping them onto the dashboard area so there we've got our temperature for tank 1 unit 2 I can also add the temperature for tank 2 unit 2 to the same chart And then here I'll create a chart for humidity. And then I'll also do the same for the tank level. Now you can configure your chart and change your chart type using the icons at the top here. So we could change this to a bar chart. And we could also add things like threshold. 
where we can say if the value is greater than 30 we can display it in red okay so as you can see we are viewing the live data here for some reason my temperature is not showing so here we can choose to view the data from say the last hour and you can also filter through your data okay so that brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your connections